Hi guys, this is Santiago from Svetkant and this Tuesday 10th of May at 8 p.m. I will be live from D Metal Galaxy's YouTube channel. We will be discussing our new EP Three Phases. Make sure to subscribe to D Metal Galaxy's YouTube channel and learn more. Hello, hello everyone. Tonight we stay on IRSO to interview experimental metal band Svetkant who just released their new EP called Three Faces. So grab your booze and join us tonight. So Santi, we have interviewed you two years ago. For those who missed it and are not familiar with Sweat Kent, can you briefly introduce yourself, the band and the style you play? Uh, hello everyone, my name is Santiago. I lead and manage experimental metal band Sweat Kent. Um, we're from Dublin, and uh, our style of music is quite eclectic. We don't like caging ourselves into one specific genre, so we try experimenting with uh, stuff from from different genres. Uh, although we primarily make metal, obviously. Right. And uh, yeah, as you always describe, and how I remembered Sweat Kent, you just divide. Uh, boundaries, you search them up and you break them basically. So thank you for introducing yourself. So Three Faces has been released some time ago. How do you feel in general about the album yourself, but as well about all the reaction you just got? Um, well, as I said, uh, in the intro, like when, whenever we, we write music, like we're not too worried about, you know, trying to, you know, please a fan base or say, or say, you know, oh, what, what are people gonna think if we do this or if we do that? So we basically write whatever we feel at, at the moment and then we just develop it. Um, in this case, uh, the music uh, in this new, new EP, three phases, mm -hmm. um, I think it's like more direct and more, you know, Balls to the walls than maybe what was released in the visage and bias and loneliness. So I think it's it kind of shows kind of like a different side of the band and a little bit more mature. And uh, so far we are very happy uh, about the reviews we've gotten and you know how how the people have uh, have reacted to it. Yeah, I agree with you totally, Santi. And when I was listening, I had the same feeling, but I would uh, I uh, would add as well that this album, if you listen to Three Faces, it's much more focused, like the tracks are shorter, and it's going into one direction. It's still experimental, but yet it explores, like to say, one side. And for me, it felt more intense than the previous one. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I think now in, in this in this EP, which is made up of three songs, and um, well, it's about twenty minutes of music. So uh, we kind of each track kind of has their own its own uh, you know flavor and its own theme, and we just mm -hmm. focus around that theme and we just develop it and change it and then you know, present it again, but with little variations and stuff like that. So there's there's more more sense of you know identity. Right. So you mentioned uh, a team that centers about a team and a identity. Can you tell us more about it? About the identity of, of the album. Yeah, the identity and the team. What binds everything, uh, every song together, yeah. despite their different flavor. Well, uh, the. The EP is called Three Faces um, because you know there's a like a Japanese proverb that says that uh, each person has three faces: um, the one that it shows to the world, one that it shows it to you know 
close relatives, you know, family and friends, and the one that is never shown to the world, and each person only knows that face because, you know, it's basically who they are. Uh, so the EP kind of originally started as a as a one song, you know, the song was called Three Faces, and then, you know, with all the pandemic, you know, and the lockdown, and basically there was no no touring opportunities, nothing. nothing. Uh, mm -hmm. Said okay, since we have so much time on our hands, well, maybe we we can do you know expand a little bit on this and say okay, we make three phases, three songs, you know, kind of everything kind of made sense, and yeah, so we work around that uh, you know about the different uh, facets and aspects of the personality of each person, obviously with a heavy side. Yeah, exactly. But like um, every sweat can, I think what you just described, you started with the three phases. I think every sweat can album develops this way because the fears uh, unbiased started, I think, with this way the uh, album loaning has started as well with one song. Am I correct in this? Uh, well, the visage unbiased uh, was always meant to be kind of like a Mm -hmm. like a just like an album experimental album and uh it was kind of like approach as such as okay we want to write an album like a full mm -hmm. album whereas three phases it started as a, as a single you know we we were meant to release that kind of like late 2019 or beginning of 2020 and then when we were about to kind of release it then you know everything in the world went crazy so yeah. we just postponed the, the release and you know days became became weeks weeks became months months became years but uh yeah when then when we finally put it out this year i mean we were absolutely very very happy about it so i think the the worth was uh, the uh, the weight was worth certainly it's like you said it's so matured so we got a bit an idea how this EP came to be, but yet if you look how uh, the time frame you made this EP in three times, certainly COVID like helped you a lot of time uh, on your hands. But I wonder how did you make um, well? How did you get the inspiration so quick, and how did the process like? speed up because every uh, sweat can album takes like six years to make whereas this one was like three years and released uh yeah you know i mean we were quite happy with you know the visage and biased uh, mm -hmm. which was released in 2019 and uh, that was released in may 2019 and then we say okay let's not wait so so much until we kind of release new stuff so the original idea was to release a single maybe like in 2020 so that you know we kept the ball the ball rolling you know mm -hmm. kept the momentum but with all the covid stuff and obviously everything kind of got delayed but you know i mean we're always working on new stuff and we're we're always uh, writing music you know uh, obviously the fact that each of us you know a family or have jobs and we have another life besides the band that also complicates things because it's not like uh, we are kind of like fully committed to the band in terms of time i mean we, we also have our side jobs and stuff like that you know yeah exactly but that means like in two years three four times we can maybe expect another uh, sweat can't as you are on the roll the ball is rolling the moment well, probably less probably less we're, we're I mean, definitely less. Um, the goal, a good goal, would be like to release something every two years, two years and a half, three the most. So that's kind of like what we're aiming, and that's certainly gonna be the case, yeah. because you know, as you can experience recording, all the process becomes mm -hmm. faster, becomes smoother. You know, obviously, whenever you do something for the first time, there are a lot of things that you don't know that you know how to how to how you feel about it but you know with experience you know all the processes tend to speed up 
certainly so you just became major as well in making uh, this album so we hold you to that in two three years time we can uh, speak about your uh, new ones let's go back to three faces so three faces what i noticed at sound when i was listening to myself i saw a bit more uh folk folklore elements a bit paganism something uh, like in that direction when i was listening so for you, uh, what, what am I correct, or did you had other influences that can be found in this album? Uh, yeah, you know, I, I just uh, I think that the our previous album was kind of like quite uh, quite dissonant and quite uh, growled uh, focus, where there were mm -hmm. a lot of growths and not not so much you know clean singing and stuff like that. So for this. For this new release, we we said okay, maybe maybe we're gonna try, you know, shifting a little bit towards more, you know, good vocal melodies and good vocal harmonies, you know, really crafted and you know work work around the the, the melodies on, on the vocals, and then intertwine that with a little bit of growth. So I would say most of this album is kind of, is mostly clean clean sing, clean sang. And then every every so often you have uh, growth. So yeah, you know it's just experimenting with what works and uh, with what doesn't work. So we just try to balance it out. And maybe if on one song we feel there shouldn't be like a guitar solo or there shouldn't be growth, then we just leave them out. Uh, we just try not try to avoid any kind of musical formulas, you know, or musical structures predefined. We just go with the flow yes yeah, certainly and this is i think it's interesting how bot albums are uh, different of each other and now if you've put it into more detail i agree but i think that's why i'm so appealed to this album as i'm much more the po uh, person who is into clean vocals so i'm like yes but it as well showcased like the musical capability of sweat candle going into a total different musical direction i think it's a very beautiful twist this album yeah yeah we try you know we, we always try to we try to release maybe that maybe that's kind of like a reason for why we tend to take so much time into releasing stuff that we just write stuff and put it out you know we have something and then we try to work around it so that it's kind of always interesting so that maybe the process is it's a little bit slower because mm -hmm. maybe you have something and when you wrote it you said oh this this is this is okay but then maybe a couple of weeks later you say no actually this is not working so you might have to we change everything you know yeah because the idea is to kind of always maintain the interest when you're writing music Great. Another thing we've mentioned and thoughts in the previous interview is that Sweat Kent is an album that makes music on a high level. Previous time you had Ted Jensen as an extra pair on board and raising Sweat Kent to a high level. So for Three Faces, who was the extra pair of Ice and who brought this album to a higher level? Uh, well, the album is it was uh, pre-produced by ourselves like we have like at this uh, studio rehearsal studio where we can uh, record stuff because i know how to do that and then we went and uh, track drums and mix it uh, with our good friend uh, michael from track mix recording studios which i think it's probably ireland's best metal studio and uh, this time uh, for the mastering uh, we went uh, with uh, an engineer called Adam Ayan. I know how you pronounce that. It's A A Y A N, and uh, he's he's a mastering engineer from America, from Maine, and uh, he's uh, he's the one who mastered uh, Megadeth. Uh, the system has failed, and he's you know he's like a, a Grammy winning mastering engineer. So. Uh, that's that's the one whom we went with. Yeah, you know, we always try to 
uh, leave the mastering the mastering uh, part to a fresh pair of ears to you know, to have like a new perspective and uh, to have you know that stamp of approval. Yeah, it's nice to just get someone on board uh, who isn't so familiar with the music and like here's I suppose for the first time something. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, because maybe because maybe for us the music that we do it, it might be like super you know very familiar to ourselves but maybe when you show that to someone who's completely uh, unacquainted with that type of music he's gonna say okay i listen to this and i feel like a good mastering session would bring the music to this, to this new level right and maybe yeah. the thing that he presents to us is something completely different of what we were expecting, but still we like it, you know? We always kind of like that kind of uh, interaction between people who don't know us and people who do. Yeah, it's always the hardest to spot your own mistakes because sometimes you are so used to a certain way of doing stuff or like sometimes it's the pair of uh, just opens you by just pointing at something that you normally do it and you're like, oh. Exactly. So about uh, the album, I was looking and holding this album, and one thing I noticed here, we have here, uh, well, for me, these are Chinese or Chinese folklore, and then we have see here uh, some Chinese or a bit different, uh, well, Marx characters. So I'm yeah. wondering then about the artwork, how did the ID came to life and how does it connect uh, to the music? We talked a bit about the three faces. So maybe there is a reference here, but can you take us from the creation to, yeah. to connecting it with the music? Uh, yeah, well, as I said before, uh, the song and the EP, Three Faces, uh, they are they're rooted on the on that Japanese proverb about the different faces each person has. So when I was designing the the cover and the artwork and the inlay, I, you know, I just had kind of that that image in my head. And then I I bought some you know digital books about Japanese my, mythology and stuff like that. And, you know, and you just start browsing through images. And, Say okay, this image might work, which is, which you know that the that the single has a different cover than the than the actual uh, CD. Uh, so whenever I saw, well, as you can see in the cover, there's kind of like a, this three three headed person. There's like one guy looking straight, and then two mm -hmm. two guys, uh, a girl and a guy to, to his side, and. Uh, you know that I saw that image. I said, "Okay, I need to use this because you know there's exactly three faces." And then in the ins in the inlay CD, there there's kind of like a like a bird that has three heads as well. I said, three faces. I need to use this as well." So, and I just wanted to look, you know, Japanese oriented. That's why. And then you know, you always as metal is, you always add a little bit of blood because metal and blood go together. And uh, yeah, that's that's kind of how it 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 was born. Amazing story, but how did you get into Japanese uh, folklore or Japanese? Is it like something out of your own interest, or you are like pointing the finger at? Us? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm I'm interested in, in Japanese Oriental culture as such. You know, uh, I find. Uh, Japan is kind of like a really interesting country. Like I've never been there, but I know there is kind of like a completely different culture if, when you compare it to Occidental culture. And um, I know it's just I I when I, whenever I when I read that proverb for, for the first time, like it made so much sense that this is, this is amazing. Like it's it's completely true because um, I also read another another saying or proverb I don't know where from that it says that uh, you the person you are nobody knows you you are always uh, someone different to different people right so yeah. like let's say I have 10 friends I'm not gonna be the same person to each <laughs> of my 10 friends because each of them have their own way of interpreting myself 
who I, who I am. So basically, it's there. If there is nine billion people in the world, basically, there's nine nine billion uh, types of of myself because each person can see me through their own experiences of life. So that's I, I've I've always been inter interested in that kind of psychological and then personality traits. I love this uh, angle. And I would say that this artwork is experimental as well, because who of all metal bands, well, maybe except Japanese bands, but like who of the metal bands puts like this sociology into an album and uses like Japanese culture to just display their artwork? This is like the first time I saw this and I was like, whoa, this is interesting on myself. I have to display it somewhere else because it's just something different than all other bands alike yeah i mean I, that's just i think that's kind of like just ingrained in us you know we, we kind of like we really try our best into avoid you know the the stereotypes or, or you know the typical metal cliches and stuff like that so uh, that's that's just what what we try to do you know uh, maybe do our own thing and do it a little bit slower, but, you know, with our own personality and with, with our own favor and touch. Nice. Uh, let's now talk about the videos, which were quite interesting. I was comparing them to your previous one, and I noticed that in this one there's a lot of distortion, and also it's unrecognizable wood guitarist and so on i saw no faces in the videos conjured, conjured and three faces so i'm wondering what artistic choices were made of displaying this album uh well, well the videos they were both videos were were produced and done by us uh, throughout these years um originally the idea was to release only one video for three faces and then okay let's do another one for a concert you know nine minute video why not and uh yeah I, I you know i like the idea of since we we did the typical the typical videos of us playing in in, in the past uh in, in this case we wanted to do something more like you know okay no one knows yeah who I am. Who, who's who's whom who is this guy i don't know i just I just see him. I just see them play, but I, I can see their faces, and uh, you know, I, I I just just felt right, and uh, we 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 wanted to, you know, I, I I'm very very fond of you know close up close up very close up shots where you can see you know the details of of the skin or you know details that you wouldn't notice if you don't do like really really uh, uh, big zoom ins. So, yeah, I, it just felt right that way. Tonight I'm going to watch where are the hidden stuff when you do close-up. What do, will I discover there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, there's there's a little, there's some hidden details. You just need to discover them. But I, I mean, I think the, the videos, uh, they work well. It's kind of like a story, obviously, you know. In the first story, the main character is chased through the woods and then he's like finally kidnapped. And then in Conjured, it's, well, the, the captors are doing funny stuff to the, to the and it, person. And it keeps you, like, in attention in one way you want to find out who is who, but as well what's happening there exactly, because it's, like, it's happening fast. And then I'm wondering, so you did two videos, if I'm correct. So what happened with the white parlor uh, video? Well, that's still uh, that's still uh, an idea that that we might we might bring to life. Uh, so it might happen or it might not. Where there's you know now we're doing some you know uh, pre-production and you know writing new stuff. So uh, we definitely have that on on a thing that we would like to do. For those who want to make it happen, just comment below when watching this uh, video. So. Maybe it will happen faster. <laughs> Definitely. 
And uh, then uh, can you share us any spoilers on the white parlor or is it top secret? Well, the, the idea would be that, well, at the end of Conjured, the person who was being kept uh, in prison kind of manages to get out of his, you know, his cell. So the idea that we had was kind of like, maybe that, that person is kind of like stranded in the, in the woods and, you know, trying to find, find his way back to normal life. And then we're going to have to try and see if the guys actually can catch him or if he, or if he will be able to, to escape. So that's kind of like the main, the main idea. Great. Le and then uh, last thing I wanted to talk about uh, album was Sweatcant is a band where you push yourself to the boundaries. We talked a bit about album and so on, but can you tell us what boundary was the hardest that you pushed in this album or the most challenging one? Uh, I'd say I'd say if you listen to our previous albums, they're they're kind of like changing direction. The songs are kind of always almost evolving constantly, right? So, you know, after mm -hmm. a couple of minutes or, or maybe after 30 seconds, then maybe the song took a, a completely new direction. I think that in this in this EP, we kind mm -hmm. of force ourselves to maybe work a little bit more around a specific theme and develop it further rather than just changing drastically drastically the the direction of the song so that was i'd say that was kind of like a challenge for us because you know when you're when you're used to writing music that changes all the time it feels unnatural when you spend too much time like on the, on the same section yeah and i can imagine it's also hard to just find uh, and go beyond the boundaries. So I'm wondering then, how did you manage to evolve the sound? In what way did you get the inspiration to move uh, forward? Uh, well, if you can see in, in this, uh, well, if you can listen, actually, in this, in this album, um, I've also did a little bit of you know, sampling and there are some nice uh, sound effects and some, you know, samples from well, I, I work with uh, with Logic, and uh, they have like a, a really interesting uh, library of you know, you know, these effects or you know, uh, they're called like this uh, mellotrons, and you know, uh, they're called BSI, no, uh, virtual studio uh, software or instrument, something like that. Well, you know, you press a key and, you know, there's kind of like a beam of light and that sounds or, you know, mm -hmm. crystal caverns or, you know, space from the galaxies, whatever. So we also introduced kind of like a little bit of atmospheric sound effects, very, very subtle, almost unnoticeable. But if you pay, if you pay good attention, you're, you're going to hear something in the background, which are not the ordinary instruments, bass, guitar, drums, you know, just to give it kind of like a new... I need I mention to our music. Interesting. So we will be looking at close up searching for hidden details. We will be listening carefully of hidden details. So it's an album full of surprises, three phase. Definitely. I mean, we, whenever we kind of mix stuff, sometimes we don't want to make it super obvious. Uh, we also want the listener to kind of, you know, investigate a little bit with their ears, you know. Uh, don't just give them everything in a, like a, in a silver plate. In a silver plate, you know. it's always good. Uh, I think the best albums are the ones that the more you listen to them, you find every time you listen it, you find kind of new stuff. You know, that's that's kind of like really interesting. You know, it's like watching a movie again and again. Every time you watch it, you find new new things you you never noticed before. Certainly, I've uh, now so homework to do for the review. Sure. I will be listening and just uh, like processing everything so I'm wondering anything uh, we missed out on the album three phases or anything you want to share that we didn't mention tonight uh, 
No, not really. I mean, um, I think uh, the album was works well uh, in terms of how the, the songs develop one another. Because if you if you check the the length of each song, you see you have like a short, short, long, short uh, structure where the, the the middle track is the, the longest one, and it's also like the most the most dissonant and the, the more growly one. Whereas the ones that are on the at the beginning and at the, and at the end, they are more more melodic or they have more uh, vocal melodies and more vocal harmonies so that's kind of like a kind of like a hidden detail you know kind of like the symmetry you know short long short mm, interesting so it was a symmetry idea but was it also different purposes like i don't know attracting people into the album well i i think i always whenever we're kind of selecting the mm -hmm. you know the the set list or how uh, you always think, you know, okay, the first track is kind of like starts very calm, but it continuously uh, grows and, you know, it becomes heavier and heavier and heavier. And by the end of the first track, it's like super heavy. And then you you finish the first track and it's like very, very heavy. So you think there, okay, let's keep, let's keep the momentum. So we start with concert, which starts with, with a very energetic intro, so and and this is the heaviest one. So we go from less heavy to heavy, and then on the on the third track, White Parlo, it kind of push it push it back a little bit. So it's kind of like goes up and then goes out. It's like a hill. Uh, to yeah. three faces. It's a nice summary. So t thank you, Santiago, for teaching us about EP. Three faces, but as well sharing all the details, secrets, and uh, so on. And I want as well to thank our collaborators for promoting the event. We also want to thank everyone who is watching the video, sharing, and liking it. And for those who are interested of in getting your own copy of Three Faces or maybe even a t shirt, just uh, see the links uh, below. And like and subscribe the Metal Galaxy as we will be back with more interesting content. So this was it for tonight. So bye. See you next time. Bye. Thanks for having us. I look forward to showing showing you our new crazy music. Great. See you. Bye.